Coming soon, to Hastings Mystery Theater. Smart Blonde, it's a 1937 mystery comedy. The first in a slew of films concerning intrepid reporter Torchy Blaine, Glenda Farrell, of The Morning Herald. Hastings Mystery Theater is coming to you from Hastings, Michigan, USA. We originally created this series for local access TV, around 2010, and in 2019 started uploading to YouTube to share these classic films from the 1930s and 40s with their worldwide audience. And don't forget to check out our mystery theme merchandise which you can find in the description below. Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again for your kind support that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight we have another wonderful black and white murder mystery from the 1930s and 1940s. Tonight the corridors of mystery take us to 1944 for a PRC movie, Shake Hands with Murder. In tonight's movie, a bail bondsman and her partner provide bail for a banker accused of stealing some bonds. The banker then disappears. The bail bondsman began to search for him and find his business partner murdered. The victim was scheduled to be a prosecution witness in the upcoming trial, so his murder makes things look grim for the missing banker. But the bail bondsmen find him, and he convinces them he is innocent of the theft and the bonds and the subsequent murder. Our two bail bondsmen jump into the middle of the case to prove it. They are played by Iris Adrian and Frank Jenks. The man accused is Douglas Fowley. All three were veterans of B-movies and each had a shtick for which they were known. Iris Adrian is the little lady with a big voice. She was 32 years old when this movie was made and it was already her 50th movie. Frank Jenks is the wisecracking sidekick. He always played a wisecracking sidekick. Douglas Fowley had spent his earlier career cast as the villain and now he was the good guy with some romantic scenes with Iris Adrian. What a change of pace for Douglas Fowley. In real life, he was never without a woman. He had seven wives before he died at age 87. These three actors were usually billed in the middle of the credits, so receiving top billing was quite a jump for all three. Let's return to 1944 and enjoy Shake Hands with Murder. See, wait. Look. In jail. Oh, you big lug. Why don't you bail him out? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't blow a fuse. I tried to bail him out, but he said no go. Wants you to make bond for him. Wouldn't say why. I never heard of a bird in jail being so particular about who bails you out. Listen, Patsy, why don't you forget the small fry? Don't you remember what I've always told you? Just one good account and we're right on top. Now, I've got a tip. Ah, oh, forget your tips. We're not doing so bad. Five-dollar fees mount up when you get a lot of them. I'll be right over. Hello. And don't go back to sleep. Why, you big lug? I just had one pair of nylon. Oh. Hello, Tim. Well, how are you, Patsy? Got the dope on Blake? Right here. You'll send for him? It's coming right in. Miss Patsy. Hello, Joe. What you been doing this time? Oh, nothing. Nothing, huh? <laughs> well, I'll give you an itemized statement of your nothings. Number one, violation 465. 
Number two, violation of 1093. Number four, violation... Hey, what happened to number three? That one's censored. Oh. Sounds like nothing. Oh, it's a frame-up, I tell you. Oh, I know you're innocent, Joe, but fees for frame-ups are five dollars. Oh, that's okay by me. I'll give it to you tomorrow. I'm not running a credit business. Oh, thanks, Miss Patsy. I knew you'd trust me. Oh, come on, Joe. Sign here. 25,000, Yeah, this looks all right. Looks like everything's in order, Mr. Morgan. Just sign right there. Mr. Jones, you'll never know what this means to me. Oh, it means a great deal to me, too. And don't forget, if you're ever locked up again, just don't forget to call on the best little bail bond office in town. The firm of Brent and Jones will push you out of jail quicker than who Denny can get out of handcuffs. <laughs> Here's hoping I'll never have to call on you again. Would you mind accepting my check for the fee? Oh, sure, I'll take your check. You know, that, that rubber don't bounce like it used to. <laughs> <laughs> You'll pardon me if I'm not exactly in a laughing mood. Oh, but you feel better once you're out. And don't forget you're to be in court in two weeks. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Is it all right to go now, Sergeant? You're free to go now, Mr. Morgan. Thank you. Sarge, wait till that Patsy gets a load of this. Doesn't she know about this? Oh, it's a surprise. I hope so. Hang you kidding. That's right. I'll have your bail over there by noon. The fee'll be five dollars. Fine. Bye. Brenton Jones, bail bond. Miss Brent speaking. Hey, Patsy, come on, come on, hang up. Forget the small fry. Look, I got a surprise for you. Something good. Yes, John. I'll be glad to take care of it. But the fee must be cash. Ten dollars. That's right. Goodbye. Ten dollars. Just what have you got that's so good? Good? It's better than good. It's marvelous. We're sitting on top of the world. Yeah, well, go on before we fall off. You've been sneering at my ideas for a long time. You've been thinking right along that I'm just a dreamer, that I could never do it. Do what? Pull us out of the financial gutter and put us right where we belong, on top of the heap, in the big time, the easy money. Quit dramatizing. Cut the suspense. Tell me, what happened? Look, baby, from now on, all we take is the very cream. The skim milk goes to the little outfits. Now stop this, Eddie. Just what did you do? Plenty. You read the headlines where the Clark Investment Company had one of their employees arrested for investment. Well, what's that got to do with that? Lots, honey. I bailed them out. And our fee is 2,500 plasters. And that's just a starter to what we're going to do from now on. Who is that fellow you bailed out? A guy named Steve Morgan. Well, who's his lawyer? How do I know? Didn't you even bother to find out what he's charged with? Didn't I? Certainly embezzlement. $100,000 in negotiable securities. Oh, you don't. You numbskull! Hey, what are you talking about? Why didn't you see me before you bailed that fella out? Don't you know what you've done? Well, well certainly I made $2,500. Put us in a pink. Pink? You mean the red. You've used up all our financial resources bailing out one client. And I bet you took a check for our fee and you don't even know if it's good. Oh, yes, I do. I called the bank. Well, even if Morgan's check is good, you've still put all our eggs in one basket. Suppose he runs out on us. Where does that put us? On the rocks, broke, bankrupt. What makes you think he'll jump bail? With $100,000 in negotiable securities stashed away and a chance to run out with him? Do you think he's likely to stick around and be set up for a long term? Why didn't you wait and let us investigate and find out about him before taking a chance like that? Now, if I'd have waited, one of the big bonding companies would have grabbed him off right from under our noses. And anyway, the bond's only for a couple of weeks, until the trial. With transportation as fast as it is these days, where do you think he could get in two weeks? Well, I'll tell you, around the world twice. And any place he'd choose to hold up, he'd be safe. Do you know where he went after you got him out of jail? How should I know? Maybe home for a good sleep. Yeah, well, that's something I'm not going to get, and I can thank you for it. Hello, Joe. Hiya, Miss Patsy. Here's your dough and tanks. Thank you. You might need it, Miss Patsy. You mean we might need it. Look, I'm transacting all my business with the lady. All right, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. What is it, Joe? Well, you've always been good to me, Miss Patsy, and up to now, I ain't never been able to pay you back. You don't owe us any money. Oh, money. I don't mean money. I, I mean like what you did for me last night, you know, a favor. Oh, I haven't any favor to ask of you. Well, it's just something I heard. You bailed that fellow Morgan out for 25 Gs. Well, what about it? Yeah, what about it, Joe? Well, when I was locked up last night, me and that Morgan guy were cellmates, see? And he tells me he ain't gonna take this rap laying down. You mean he's gonna forfeit his bond? Well, he... he didn't put it that way. That is, not exactly. He says that them people he works for have got him framed and he ain't gonna stand no trial as long as they got the cards stacked against him that way. Did you hear that, Eddie? I'm not deaf. No, but you're dumb. Now, wait a minute. Here we are holding the sack. If what Joe says is true, our business is sunk. If Steve Morgan gets away, we're bankrupt. That 
what comes of your little surprises without consulting me. All right, so I made a mistake. I'm sorry. You're sorry. Oh, now he's sorry. A lot of good that's going to do us. We've got to do something. Oh, gosh, Miss Patsy, I didn't mean to start any fireworks. <laughs> I only wanted to tip you off. I know it, Joe, and I, I'm glad you had enough gumption to let me know. And if you run across Steve Morgan, be sure and come in and tell me, and I'll make it worth your while. Oh, sure, I'll do that. Well, what are we going to do? There's only one thing we can do. Find Steve Morgan and turn him in so we can surrender that bail as a bad risk. Where does he live? Oh, I got it right here. 812 Main Street. Why, you dope. What have I done wrong now? That isn't where Morgan lives at all. That's the address of the Clark Investment Company. And you can bet me he won't be hanging around there. Why, that dirty, low-down loafer. All right, so he's dirty and he's low-down. But hustle yourself over at the bank and see if you can cash that check. He's more than likely closed his account before he skipped. And then go down to the jail and get Morgan's home address. I'll be waiting for you in the coffee shop at the Clark Investment Company. Joe, go with Eddie in case he gets lost. Yes, ma'am. So. Looks like I bent the clasp a little. Well, it was my fault. I shouldn't have left it there. Well, I'll owe you a new bag unless I can fix this one. Oh, that's all right. It's just an old one. If I only had something to hammer with. Yeah, I'll try this. Well, when it comes to hammers, I'm well healed. Here. Well, in case of an emergency, you can always depend on a woman. <laughs> Would you mind holding that for me? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Let me see. I'm awfully clumsy today. Got the jitters. <laughs> Well, I'm a little jittery myself. I think this will hold for a while anyway. And here's your shoe. Thanks. I'll help you put it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh that's all right. I... So many things have happened to me today. A little bump on the head doesn't mean a thing. Well, you're a good sport about it anyway. What'll it be? Oh, uh, I left a little parcel here the other day. There it is. Yes, that's it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, I uh, hope the rest of the day will be luckier for you. <laughs> well, it just has to be. Well, if it's as bad as all that, perhaps I could help you. Oh, no. Uh, I'll have to handle it myself. Okay. Good luck to you anyway. I thought you were in jail. You seem disappointed that I got out. As a matter of fact, I am. Sit down. Thank you. You know I didn't steal our securities. Why did you allow them to put me in jail? Having you locked up in jail right now exactly suited my purpose. So that's why you've been so nice to me. Employing me here and allowing me access to the vault. Having a scapegoat on hand was part of your plan. Well, Mr. Clark, I'm not going to prison for a crime I didn't commit. I'm not even going to trial until I can tear down some of that evidence against me. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Get the evidence myself. And I thought that with you in jail, the real criminal would feel that he wasn't suspected. Of course, I'm not fully convinced yet that you didn't do it. But if I didn't, do you have a clue that might indicate somebody else? Maybe. You see this? Yes. Oh, that's a serial number from one of the stolen bonds. Where did you find it? I found that at the investment company's lodge, which means that some member of our firm stole the bonds. Five other men besides ourselves have keys to the lodge. That isn't much of a clue, Mr. Clark. 
It only pins it down to one out of five. With you, it's one out of six. You must have known that much all along. Well, there's one thing about it that's pretty certain. The thief hid the bonds somewhere near or possibly in the lodge. Now, I've called all five of the suspects together in the boardroom to discuss the bond theft with me. And my secretary, Miss Johnson, has cautiously let the rumor get to them that I have positive proof against one of them. you again. <laughs> well, at least you didn't sit on my purse. I can't very well do that with you holding it. Well, I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Where have you been? Where have you been dawdling around? I've been waiting here for hours. Now, wait a minute. Give me a chance to explain with you. I had a lot of things to do. Was Morgan's check good? Certainly. Would you find out where you live? Sure. Well, come on, let's hurry right over. Now, wait a minute. I already thought of that. I was out there and there's nobody home, so I left Joe Blake out there to watch the house. The minute Morgan comes back, he's going to phone us at our office. Well, for once you've shown a grain of sense. Let's get up to John Clark's office. Clark's office? For what? Listen, my little moronic friend, the Clark outfit's got a lot of dough in this, too, a lot more than we have. And Clark doesn't want Morgan to escape any more than we do. And he'll jump at the chance to give us a clue as to where to start to look. Come on, Eddie. Oh, take it easy, we did. Now, this is it. Let me do the talking. Try and stop you. Oh, uh, yes? Could I see Mr. Clark, please? I'm afraid he's busy now. Perhaps I can help you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I must see Mr. Clark. It's very important. But Mr. Clark has asked not to be disturbed. You'll have to wait a little while. Uh, can't you tell Mr. Clark we can't wait? Well, perhaps you'd rather come back another time. No, no, we'll wait. Um, you keep out of this. Well, I was only trying to help you. So we'll wait. I guess we'll wait. Wait. That's all I've done all morning. Wait for you, wait for him. If you'd have been on time this morning, we wouldn't have been cooling our heels now. What's the difference whether we're cooling them now or earlier? You can't just bust in on these big shots. They always make you wait. So he's too busy to see anybody. She let him in, didn't she? I can bust that secretary right in the nose. Ah, oh, you better not. We might not have enough money to bail you out. Hmm. Thanks to you. Will you take care of this, Miss Johnson? Yes, Mr. Howard. be great to be a big shot. Yeah, don't forget you're trying to be a big shot. Got us into this mess. Well, I still say just one good account would put us right on top. Mention that once more and you'll be right on the floor. Always the lady. <laughs> For a man that's too busy to see anybody, Mr. Clark's certainly having a lot of company. Mr. Howard and Mr. Stanton are both board members. Miss Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. I suppose he is. Yes, Mr. Kennedy is also a board member. Would you mind telling me how many board members there are in this outfit? If you must know, five. That's encouraging. Only two more to go. But we haven't got all day. Now listen, lady. You listen. Be quiet. Oh, this is great. That he's barking up the wrong tree. I don't believe in pampering crooks. Stolen securities are located. The thief is in the pursuit and sent him to prison and never recovered them. On that theory, he could go scot-free simply by returning half his loot. The minute we start bargaining with the thief, we're going to get the short end of the deal. I won't compromise with crooks. I don't agree with you. Why not? 
You're right, Kennedy. <clears throat> Definitely right. The board members are waiting, Mr. Claus. Catch Clark as he comes through here. Maybe he doesn't come through here. While she's out, I'll nail him in there. Well, she might come back and kiss you. So what? Uh, just remember, you're on your own, baby. I'm always on my own. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Am I intruding? I hope you're not sore, because I busted in this way. Are you asleep? attend a board meeting. You may speak to him as he comes through here, but please be brief. Oh, never mind. Uh, uh, I guess I can see him some other time. But a few moments ago, you had to see Mr. Clark. He's leaving town, and I think you better wait. Oh, well, maybe I can give him a little time. Well, that's nice of you. Thank you. Does he have the outside to see you? You're also doing the director's meeting, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Are you ill? Are you... Stop! 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 Uh, who has been in this office today? Well, Mr. Kennedy here. Why, why, I didn't even speak to Clark. I wasn't here but a minute. Mm. And then, well, Mr. Howard. I, yes, I just stepped in to check a document in the file and I went right out again. Uh, who else? Well, you, Mr. Stanton. I know that, but I mean, who else? Well, well no one ex except myself and you all know that I wouldn't kill anybody. How about you fellows? Either one of you see Clark this morning? No. I was late getting here this morning. What's the difference who saw him? None of us did it. What we should do is call the police. Now! Don't anybody touch this thing in here until the police arrive. Police department, please. And don't let anybody leave here until the police do arrive. That's our cue to get out. Well, we got ourselves mixed up in a nice, juicy murder. What are we going to do about it? Nothing. I didn't kill him. Yeah, but you were the last one in there. Well, if the cops want to question me, they can look me up. Now, don't worry. They'll get around to that, all right. And while they're looking for me, I'll be looking for Steve Morgan. You know, I'd forgotten about Steve Morgan. Say, do you think that Morgan really killed Clark? Solving murders is a little out of my line. That's what the police get paid for. If I only knew what Steve Morgan looked like. Ah, that's one of the dozens of little things that I thought of this morning while you were kept waiting. I picked this up at the Police Identification Bureau. Morgan's mug photo. Why didn't you say so? Not a bad looking guy, huh? Morgan? That's the bird we got all our dough on. Do you know who that fella is? 
My shirt. It's still Steve Morgan. If you'd have been on time this morning, the bond would have been canceled by this time. All the time you were dawdling around, I was sitting in a stool right next to him. I was even talking to him. I could have nabbed him just like that. And he even had the bonds with him. How do you know? They were in a package like that. He'd left them with the waitress in the coffee shop. And when he asked for the package he'd left there, I saw her hand them to him. Steve Morgan isn't only a thief, he's a murderer. Calm down, Patsy. You're way off your beam. Yes, sir. Morgan killed Clark sometime between the time he left me in the coffee shop and when I bumped into him in the corridor. Oh, now, just because you saw him out there, there's no sign that he killed the man. You know, there were hundreds of other people in the building. Yes, but only one with a motive. Now, listen, Eddie. Morgan stole the security. Clark had the dope on him. So Morgan figured, dead man, tell no tale. Get it? Huh. Looks like you built yourself up a case. Brenton Jones' bond office. He is. Are you sure? We'll be right out. Morgan's out of his place? Yeah, that was Joe Blake. Says he just drove in. Come on, let's get going. Wait a minute, chum. Catching a murderer isn't always so easy. I'll hurry out and keep an eye on him. You round up the police. And don't dawdle. He's in there. That's his car out in front of the house. And he'll be here in a few minutes with the police. Well, he better hurry up. Or Morgan will get away. I just looked in his window and he's packing a suitcase. Joe, we can't let him escape. He killed John Clark. He killed... Oh, no, Miss Patsy. He killed John... Oh, no, he'd never commit murder. He might steal a few securities or something. Why, well, he's one of the nicest cellmates I ever had. Yeah, well, then you get in there and stall him a few minutes. Oh, sure. Who? Oh. Me go in there? Oh, Miss Patsy. He might kill me. All right, if you're scared, I know how to stop him. Look. Hey, there he goes. Joe, you stay here and wait for Eddie. Yes, ma'am. Hurry up, Miss Patsy. He he's getting away. Come on. Get it started. Trying to do wreck both of us? Oh, wow, so it's, it's you again. again. Pins and needles. Pins and needles. Close your eyes and make a wish. Okay. Well, I hope you get your wish. You bet I will. I've practically got it now. Yeah? I wish I could say the same thing. A girl? Uh-uh. A boy? You bet. <laughs> you know, three's my lucky number. And this makes the third time I bumped into you today. No, twice. This one's on me. Oh. Everything seems to be okay. You can back out now. be wrong. The engine won't start. It won't, huh? Do you have a tow line? No, but uh, I'll send some friends of mine around to pick it up later. Would you mind if I rode with you for a little way? Of course not. It'll be a pleasure. Just how far you're going. Well, I'll let you know when I want out. Not very far. Okay. I don't think I've ever introduced myself. I'm Stephen Morgan. 
Oh, you don't know how glad I am to know you, Mr. Morgan. I'm, uh, Mary Smith. Smith? Gee, what an odd name. Smith. In you go, Miss Smith. There we are. Do that every time you started? Not always. Hey, Joe. Joe, where's Patsy? Uh, she beat it. She went after Steve Morgan. Steve Morgan got in his car and beat it down away, and Patsy got in her car and she went after him. Are you kidding? You, she went after him in her car? Yeah. Well, now, look, Joe. Yeah. Joe, you stay here and keep an eye on the house. Yeah. I got about 12 cops down there. Now, you do that, will you? Yeah. I'll see if I can catch them. 12 cops? 12 cops? Hey, I got to get out of here.
Come out of there or I'll shoot. Oh, it's you. Yeah. Well, come on out. Come on. Now, oh, Miss Smith, what are you doing here? Well, the Smiths weren't home and I couldn't get in. Well, I just had to go somewhere. I don't think there are any Smiths. I don't think there ever were any Smiths. Oh, yes, there are. There are a lot of them. The world's full of Smiths. You must have a reason for coming here. What is it? Well, I was scared out there in the dark. It was cold and... I'm hungry, too. Listen, lady. The name's Smith. Okay, Miss Smith. I don't believe anything you say. Why, Mr. Morgan. Well, I do believe you're hungry and I know it's cold and dark outside. I might be a sap and make yourself at home. I'll fix you something neat. I can't understand you climbing in that window and then hiding from me. Why didn't you come to the door and ring the bell? Well, I didn't know how you'd feel about having a strange woman barge in on you like this. Now, Miss Smith, you don't really expect me to believe that, do you? I thought I'd just curl up on the divan for the night and then sneak out early without your knowing I was here. <laughs> of course, I couldn't possibly remain here now. Uh, it wouldn't be proper. <laughs> You're terrific. For a minute, I thought you were going to ask me to get out. This is a sort of a, what you might call a predicament, a, a dilemma. But you look like such a nice young man. One a girl would instantly recognize as a gentleman, a, sort of the big brother type. <laughs> Do the doors have bolts? No, but they have keys. I'll get them. Here's your key. <laughs> Thank you. You'll find your room directly at the head of the stairs. Just why have you been following me? That dumb partner of mine, Eddie Jones, put up every cent of our resources just to bail you out. Mister, I've got $25,000 invested in you, and I'm sticking like a leech till I get you back to court and cancel that bond. So that's why you wanted me to haul the first motorcycle policeman today. And let have me picked up. What else would I want with a fellow like you? A man who runs out on his bond. But I didn't run out. I'm merely trying to dig up enough evidence to prove my innocence. As it is now, I wouldn't stand a chance in court. Those securities were still official of the Clark Investment Company. I have good reason to believe they're hidden up here somewhere. What makes you think they're up here? I'll show you. John Clark found this piece of a missing bond up here, and he's coming tonight to help me search for the stolen securities. I might believe that if I didn't know John Clark was dead, murdered. You killed him between the time I saw you in the coffee shop and when we met again in the corridor. I killed John Clark? I didn't even know anything about it. Is Clark really dead, or is this another one of your lies? I didn't mean to mention that. I must have been crazy following a thief and a murderer up here. I'm getting out. Now, wait a minute. You're going to stay right here. Sit down. Now, tell me, what happened to Clark? When I went into Clark's office to get the lowdown on you, he was found strangled. Therefore, the man who stole the bonds also killed Clark. He'll try to fasten the murder on me. Well, if you didn't do it, we better get back to town so you can tell the police you're innocent. It might be all right as far as your bail money is concerned, but it would be like sticking my neck into a noose. No, I'd better stay around here and try to find our stolen bonds. If I can get my hand on those, it might help me trap the murderer. Murderer or no murderer? If you don't show up at the trial, I'll lose my $25,000 bail. Listen, if you want me to be there, just pitch in and help me find the securities. Okay. When do we start? Right now. Come on. We've just about wrecked this place, and we haven't found those bonds yet. I wish we had one of those doodle bugs. Huh? What kind of a bug? You know, one of those rods you locate hidden treasures with. How about an educated termite? Hey, I've got it. Higher. Go higher. This is as high as I go. I knew it! 
I told you. Well, did you see anything besides stars? Are you kidding? Help me out of here, will you? Oh, that's great. Don't hit me on the head with it. Oh, sorry. Patsy, this thing moves. Well, well, what is it? I don't know. There's something. Oh, do you think we found it? Your guess is as good as mine. It's stuck. Patsy, will you please give me a little leeway? Thank you. It opens, all right. Empty. But I thought shoot at you. You're telling me. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. I think I got it. Yeah? You see this wire? Mm-hmm. Well, the thing rigged this trap up so as it connect with that panel over there. It's so simple. All you have to do is when you slide that panel back, it automatically pulls the... Ah! Oh! What happened? I don't know. I must be a sap to fall over the same trap twice. Well, I forgot all about it, too. Let's take a look in the vault. Oh, I hope it's what I think it is. I hope so, too. Is it the bonds? I'll say it is. Good. Now we can go back to town. No. Not yet. Why not? Because they'll think I hid the bonds here myself. Oh, but you didn't, Steve. I know you didn't. Yeah, but the police don't know that. And there's a little matter of who murdered John Clark. Well, what are we going to do, Steve? We can't stay here forever. I don't know. Now, wait a minute. I think I got a plan that'll bring the murderer here. You'll have to stay right here. Oh, no, she don't. Step aside, Patsy. Oh, Eddie, what are you doing here? Mark? Take off that tin badge. Is he a deputy? He got that badge with the tickets of the sheriff's clam bake. Oh, there you go again. Well, I'm glad you're here, young fellow. We can use you. I warn you, Steve, you'll gum up the works. Oh, I will no such thing. Oh, oh, oh Eddie! you waiting long. Kept me waiting? I didn't know you were coming. Well, that's funny. I got a note from you today telling me to meet you up here tonight. There's something queer about that, Haskins. I never wrote you a note, but I received one from Kennedy. That's odd. Are you sure my name is signed to it? Well, it's your name, but I don't know who signed it. Well, it didn't come from me. What are you doing up here? Well, I got a note, too. Mine was signed William Howard. think anyone would be here but Adams. Did you get a note from Adams to meet you here? Why, yes. Here it is. 
Did Adams ask you fellows to come up? No, my note came from you. Not from me, Kennedy. You'd better look again. Or are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. See it signed, William Howard. Well, that is my name, all right. But not my signature. Well, <laughs> if I find I've driven all the way up here, Pablo. Well, it better not be a joke. Well, I hope not. That must be Adams arriving now. Good evening, gentlemen. I thought you were in jail, Morgan. How'd you get out? Well, I'll tell you, I... Before you tell us anything, I want to know. Are you responsible for all these mysterious notes asking us to come up here? You must be joking, Mr. Stanton. I'm not joking. And what are you doing up here? You sent me a note telling me to meet you here. I never wrote you a note in my life. And who are you? Listen, Pop, the name is Eddie Jones. I am a deputy sheriff. I can explain, Mr. Stanton. I don't think I would believe anything you say, young man. You are accused of embezzlement, and the police want to question you about the murder of John Clark. I was never indicted for that murder. And as far as the embezzlement charge is concerned, I'm out on bail. Certainly, that's right. I was sent down here to watch Mr. Morgan, just in case he tries to run out before the murder's solved. I don't know why we are here, and I don't like the looks of things. But I think we had better stay on the ride. Well, we'll do that. Right, sir. But one of us should remain here to meet Adams. Don't worry about that. I'll be here. What's in this bird? Call us when Adams arrives. Okay, chum. The minute the doorbell rings, I'll call you. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. No, thanks. I don't think we should leave Morgan here with that other little fellow. Oh, I think we'll be safe. Chum. Keep your eye on that boy. That'll do. Patsy, Patsy. Here I am. How's everything coming? So far, it's just like shooting fish in a barrel. Why can't I be in there to see it all? No, I couldn't explain your being here. Besides, I don't want you hurt. Well, I don't want anything to happen to you either. If I can't produce you in court, it'll cost me 25000 all you have to do is produce the body. They pay off in dead ones, too, you know. <laughs> I'd look fine dragging your dead body to court. What do you think I'd look like? I still think you should have rigged up that armor so it would really shoot. Uh-uh. The thief will still think it's rigged up and ready to work. It's not the old third degree. It won't be long now. Now, look, Patsy, come here. You stay here and stop snooping around. Do you get it? I get it. down the front stairs with the others. Steve, let's get out there. Right. Get back there. What's going on down here? What was that shot? Oh, I was just going in. Well, put it in your pocket. See if that fellow doesn't take it away from you. Well, you fellows can argue if you like. I'm going to show us up. Okay, Tom. I'll call you. Well, three of them don't. The other fellow can't do anything without admitting that he fired the shot at us. Come on. I can't make out a thing you're saying. You'd better go outside, Eddie, and see that everything's okay. Right. Mr. Adams, any threat you might make couldn't possibly affect a man who's already facing prison and maybe the gallows. You're going to help me prove I'm not a thief and not a murderer. Promise not to make an outcry and I'll release you. What are you after, Joe? 
George. Oh, can you use that? I feel nervous, you know. I thought you'd drink my head and go to sleep. Uh, won't you darling me? No, thanks. I left my cigarette case in my overcoat pocket. Let's see. How do you know I'm not the killer? The fellow who fired that shot at me in the house a few minutes ago is the bird I'm after. Well, why did you tie me up? You just happened to be the first to arrive. It could have been anybody. Come on, we'll go over the lodge. How's everything, Eddie? Thirsty, Bunch. Looks like everything is all right, though. Okay, let's go. You go upstairs and bring one of them down. Which one first? Anyone. Follow me, Mr. Adams. I think I have a surprise for you, Mr. Adams. You and I have seen this bookcase for many years. Just watch this. Well, I've never seen that move before. What's it all about? You'll see. Where's the bombs? In there. Now, if you'll notice, we're in a direct line with that armor, which has been rigged up as a booby trap. What happens is this. Anybody sliding back this panel will instantly be killed. Very ingenious. Very. All right, Eddie, bring one in. Now, Mr. Stanton, just relax. You have nothing to worry about. I just want to ask you a couple of simple questions. What is all this about, Adam? Sending a man out with a gun is carrying your joke a little too far. Mr. Morgan has found the securities. No. Yes, and we thought you could help us identify them. <laughs> Why, sure. But where are they? In the vault. What vault? That's just what I wanted to explain to you, Mr. Stan. Now watch this. There you are. But, uh, <laughs> where is the vault? Mr. Stanton, would you mind sliding back that panel? You mean the wall is behind the panel? That's right. You know it's rather silly, but... That'll do. Then the security is not here. You'll see them later on. Just stand over there with Mr. Adams. But, Adams, what is all this about? Right this way, Mr. Kennedy. A little hard to get along with, aren't you? Now, look, I don't want any trouble from you, buddy. Now, you take that gun away from me. I'll have you arrested for this. <laughs> That's all, brother. Oh. Now, what's this all about? Nothing, really. I just want you to slide back that panel all the way. I'll do nothing of the sort. Go ahead, Kennedy. It's not going to hurt you. What's the meaning of this? It means you're innocent. Innocent of what? The securities are in a vault behind that panel. Oh, I see. It's all right, Kennedy. You can join us now. Go ahead. All right, Eddie. Bring in another one. Why don't you try and be a good kid? Keep your hands off me! What's the idea? Is this a comedy? Letting this funny-faced thing play with a gun? You better be careful what you say, Junior. I'm liable to use you for a target. Why don't you put that gun away? Why don't you button up your lip and try and be nice? Forget it, Eddie. Is this some kind of game? Yes. Well, let me tell you before we start, I don't like funny games. This one is really serious. We have found the securities. You don't mean that. That's right. The securities are behind that panel. Panel? What panel? Right here. Go ahead, open it. How do you open it? Just slide it back all the way. This is ridiculous. Go ahead, Haskins. Open it. Step back, Mr. Morgan. Don't any of you move. And you drop that gun, quick. Kick it over here. Now get back, all of you. But really, I... Stand back, Stanton. Now, if any of you think you can stop me, don't forget what happened to John Clark when he interfered with my plans. As for you, Mr. Morgan, you've already interfered. I'm going to teach you a little lesson. 
Oh, no, you don't, Mr. Haskins. Better drop that gun. We'll take him into the city and turn him over to the police. So Haskins is the crook, huh? Oh, yeah. Steve! 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 You all right? Patsy, you all right? Mm, yeah, but I never weighed so much in all my life. What were you doing in this thing? I just want to see how clever you are. Clever? If it hadn't been for you, he would have plugged me. Oh, I'd feel awful. I'd feel terrible. You would? <laughs> sure. Can't you just see me hauling your dead body to court so I collect my bail money? Well, I wouldn't feel so good about it myself. You wouldn't? No. Oh, you big lug! Hey, wait a minute. You're trying to break me in two? Just stay still. I'll get you out of it. We'll take a second. Oh, Patsy, darling. I I'm proud of you. I'm glad to have you for a partner. What? Well, shake hands. Murder. Hi there. I'm Randall Schaefer. You see me, most of you see me, on YouTube, hosting Hastings Mystery Theater. And... This shirt honors Hastings Mystery Theater. If you would like a souvenir of this shirt or other similar products, take a look at the description down below. You can get yourself a souvenir. Thank you to all the YouTube people who watch us. We appreciate it. Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again for your kind support that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Uninvited. It's coming from downstairs. It comes from everywhere and nowhere. A house of terror on the haunted cliffs of Cornwall, where the uninvited walk unseen by men. Yet a cat arches its back in fright. Flowers are withered by the touch of an unseen malignant hand. Candles flicker and die as a ghostly chill fills the air and the living are clutched by the icy horror of the restless dead. Stop, Pamela. Don't go near that door. The Uninvited, Dorothy McCardle's gripping novel of the supernatural comes to the screen, starring Ray Land, Ruth Hussey, Donald Crisp, with Cornelia Otis Skinner, and introducing the exciting beauty of Gail Russell, whose first love is shadowed by the specters of the past. Stella, what is it? Are you ill, Stella? Quiet. Leave her alone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Stop her, Scott. Shh. She's in a trance. I saw this happen once before at a seance. I thought it was a fake. But this isn't. I know. It's dangerous. Please get out of this house now. Now lie there quietly. I'm not afraid of anything here. 
Then be afraid. Be afraid for heaven's sake. When you were a little child, the evils of this house reached out for you. Stella, go! Go! Ah!